Hello, it's been a bit slow coming, but spring is finally here and I love it. And we're going to be sharing it as ever with real people in their real gardens. This week, Carol Klein is talking birds and bees with Adrian and Debbie. Like that. Yeah. Amory Powell is with Lisa on a spring shopping binge. And I'm doing some seasonal sewing with Bryony Jacklin. Lisa Jacobson took on her tiny harrow garden when she and her husband Dominic bought the house 18 months ago. With two young children, Lisa doesn't get much time for gardening, but she does want to turn the plot into a child-friendly space that the family can enjoy. With Amory's help, she's already opened up the garden and transformed what was a rotten old shed. The last time Amory was here, we made the playhouse, which is excellent. We've had a great fun with it. Then we go for a cup of tea, shall we? Tea. Sophia's first reaction was flowers. <laughs> and then playhouse. Hello. Hello. Now Lisa is longing to get on with her next project, widening her flower border. She's made a good start by stripping the turf, and now she's ready for some advice from Anne-Marie. Well, looks like you've been busy. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Why have you decided to do this? I've been desperate to widen this border because that border has been stressing me out since I've been here. It's far too small, so at last I've widened it. So it sounds like you know what you want to put in there. Well, I do like cottage garden plants. Um, I like I just tall structural plants, lupins, uh, red hot pokers, that sort of thing, really. Yeah, so, so do you like staking and deadheading and feeding and watering and... Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is a lot of work, actually, yeah. to be honest. To keep it looking good, yeah. you need to regularly feed it, yeah. water it, make sure the plants are in tip-top condition. Yeah. You've got to really plant things that will do well mm. in this border. And mm. I mean, not today, but it usually is really bright yeah. when I come here, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very hot. Maybe we should go for something more silver-leafed, you know, something yeah. that actually likes basking in these yeah, hot, hot conditions. And, yeah. You know, things that don't need looking after a lot, yeah. you know. And yeah. you can leave the seed heads on them and let let the things grow and evolve and all you need to do is split yeah. them up when they get a bit big. So the plan is to start again. Lisa's clearing everything out of the old border while I make a holding bed. Some of what we take out can be included in our new planting scheme of low maintenance sun loving plants which we're going to go off and choose. So that's a keep. When the gardening gets tough the girls go shopping. We're at the Royal Horticultural Society Spring Show. One of the many shows they hold throughout the year in their Westminster halls. Oh, she had in the other one. Yeah. I really like that one. It's elegant like yeah. you, isn't it? Oh, it's very elegant. <laughs> Swish and elegant. <laughs> the idea is to have a good look around for the low maintenance plans we need that will fit in with our silvery colour scheme. Lovely. Look, these are great, aren't Excellent. they? The cottage garden. Look at well. these arsemutes, that's what we need, some yeah. of that sort of colour. Hello, we're sort of looking for a really sun, yeah. sunny border, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like, well, basically, anywhere to about here on the display. Right. It's nice to see that you've got more than just the purple hookahs here as well. Yes. Everybody's into the purple hookahs. I mean, this is lovely, it's plum pudding. But that one there, raspberry regal with the green leaf, and then it's lovely, tall, mm. upright red mm. flowers, is great. Once the flowers have sort of gone over, they still stay there as an architectural feature, so you can leave them and they look as though they're dried. Yeah. I like these. They're quite good to go in the back of the border because they're out early in the year, and then yeah. you can have later summer stuff going over That's the top of them. That's a good tip. Right. That's and that really way they get tip. shaded, which right. is what they like. So if you've got a sunny border, you can still grow them with something else sh shading them in the summer. We'll come back to these later, but there's plenty more to check out, including some bold structural plants. Oh, Lisa, look, this is what we want. Oh, I love that. These are your drama really plants. Nice, yeah. Sinara cardunculares. Or cardoon. And that'll get massive. It'll yeah. get taller than me. So oh, wow. Excellent. Impact. Yeah. 
and there's a lot of other things on here that we like yes. as well, isn't there? Because yes. I noticed you've got oringiums as well yep, over yep, there, which yep, we definitely yep. want some of those. Well, you mentioned that you were into sort of sunny, well-drained spots. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oringiums, of course, are classics for that. I mean, they're Southern European natives. Gorgeous. That's a, a perennial. So perennials, they, do they come up every year or how do yeah. they work? Yeah, keep flowering. As long as you keep them well-fed, they'll continue yeah. to show for years Lovely. to come. So far, so good but there's still a whole family of plants that's ideal for Lisa's dry conditions. So, we've got your architecture mm -hmm. plants, haven't we, with the cyanaras? Yeah. And we've got lots of fillers and some ground covers, but right. we need some texture. Grasses. And beautiful. these, we've got to have them. <laughs> <laughs> there's loads of them. Yeah, that's beautiful. What beautiful do you display. fancy? And I, I love the junkers, but I don't think No, it needs suitable, wet is it? ground. Yeah. Really this nice. This is pretty. But Again, it's quite sure, slow we? growing that, and yeah. we're a bit impatient yes. as two, aren't we? <laughs> quick, quick and easy. <laughs> I think these are brilliant. They don't even take these much ones. looking after right. either. Yeah, I mean this right. is great. This is a helicta trichum, which I can hardly say, and that one oh, goes cute. with our yeah. scheme, doesn't it? All yeah. the colours. Yeah. Decisions have been made. Now we just need to round them all up. Excellent. Any more? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's the last three. <laughs> big enough to get a taxi. That's a big enough Ford one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did well, yeah. didn't we? Loads of beautiful plants. But we've still got to get that soil prepared, haven't we? Yeah. Our sun-loving selection all need good drainage, so Lisa and I dig in plenty of pea gravel and compost to improve her rather heavy soil. I can start laying the plants out. I think we'll put our big sort of drama focal point plants in first mm -hmm. and then we'll put all the other little ones around and about them. Okay. But we'll leave them in their pots because then we can shuffle them around until we're completely happy with okay. how we've laid them out. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. We've bought at least three of each plant, but rather than dotting them all over the place in a bitty way, we're placing them together in larger groups. I'm going to move everything away from this cyanara here because mm -hmm. it grows massive and it'll right. just completely engulf everything else. I feel happy with that, do you? Yeah. I can't believe how many plants we've got, actually. It's I'm good, isn't surprised. it? Right, let's get planting. Just a small handful of bone meal and a good drink of water is all that's needed now. Lisa's old border was too narrow and everything was struggling to survive. Now she's got the right combination of drought-resistant, sun-loving plants, which will pretty much look after themselves. I think that started you off. Yeah. So I'm going to leave you to this. OK. And you'll enjoy it. Yeah. This is a nice job, isn't yeah. it? This is my last visit to Bryony Jacklin's garden in North Norfolk, where we've been hard at work for the past six weeks. We've cleared and replanted her pond, added wildflowers to her driveway and opened up her front garden with herbaceous borders and a new lawn. But I'm not the only one who's been lending a hand in the garden. Whenever possible, Bryony enlists the help of her children. They say all oh, kids hate gardening, but you've got to find jobs that they like doing, jobs that are meaningful. It's no good saying, you know, do the weeding, because plants and weeds look just the same to kids, so you've got to give them a l tiny little job so that they can achieve. I like planting flowers because then the soil gets on my hands and then I get all dirty. Sometimes me and Helen I cut the heads off daffodils and sometimes there's earwigs inside and sometimes I go like that. Bryony's eldest daughter Freya's big project is the herb garden which she began three years ago when she was nine. She wrote it all up as a school assignment and she's continued working on it ever since. What are you doing? I'm digging out some of the tarragon because tarragon's quite a tall herb and that's meant to be further in the middle because our design was that we have smaller things around the edges and we have them going upwards into sort of like a pyramid shape. The herb's getting taller and taller with a crab apple in the middle. And tarragon spreads terribly, yes. doesn't it? But I mean, this is an awful lot of herbs just for cooking. They're not all for cooking. We use some of them for helping cure colds and stuff. How do you use those? Well, with sage, you infuse it and use it as a throat gargle. Does it work? It works in about ten minutes. 
The only remedy for Frere's herb garden is regular maintenance, as wild plants like tarragon self-seed and spread like weeds. Now, I see you've got this lemon balm, which yeah. in my garden is a real thug. <laughs> Do you want to get rid of it, or are you happy to let that take over? I think we should get rid of it, because there's an alcamilla here, in, in between them, and that's getting throttled. At Look at where the water hangs on the leaves. I know, I like that. Very beautiful. And what do you grow the alcamilla for? It cures diarrhoea and boils. Well, that seems to be a very good reason why you should grow it. What do you want to put in there now? Some bergamot, Mum. If you put all three in, you'll have a good show. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So did these come from seed or cutting? It was cuttings taken in the autumn. I do cuttings of quite a few things to make sure they overwinter all right. Oh, it smells distinctly orangey. Orange peel. Mm. Right. Used in olden times for relievance of a trapped wind. You put it so nicely. <laughs> Shall we put this molly in, in Freya? Yeah, about there, I think. Somewhere there. Well, these mullins will go really, I mean, this will be up here, won't it? Yeah, fabulous plant. Yeah. Did you know that what the monks used to do, they grew lots of mullion and they, they cut it off to about there. Yeah. And then they set light to it. Why? To use as torches. Have you tried that? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we could try it. I have. Uh... <laughs> I've tried that and it didn't work very well. I was really disappointed, and I got, I got my children around and said, look, OK, here, this is what the monks did, look, the thing. Absolutely nothing happened. It didn't work at all. Unimpressed. They have so much natural oil in them, that's the idea, yeah, that you yeah. ignite the oil. Yeah. Three weeks ago, Brownie and I began work on the Roundel Garden, which she designed so herself in a series of concentric rings. We marked out the circles and tried them for size. Then we stripped off the turf and planted the centre circle with box. Now, to complete the formal design, Brownie wants to plant up four additional beds in a totally different style. So you've taken all the turf off then? Yeah, and actually the topsoil as well. Slightly different method this time. <laughs> I thought it was going to be easier, but it wasn't. I rotivated it, loosened the top and then took it all off. So you've, you've got, as a result, very little topsoil. Yeah. Rough old subsoil. Yeah, I've really reduced the fertility. For these wildflowers. Yeah. Now, this is going to be in complete contrast to the Roundel Garden. So what I'm looking for is a complete difference in texture. I've been potting up weeds. You've got <laughs> buttercup, which I dig up by the barrel load and throw away. Well, you know, weeds are just misplaced Herb plants. Herb Robert. Herb Robert. Which in our London garden just grew everywhere. Yeah. We just set them out on the top. If we run out, I've got a few more up at the house. While gardeners all over the country are trying to get rid of their weeds, Brownie wants four beds full of them. This will provide a striking change to the lawn for anyone going up the drive. OK. I think that's good enough for saying, don't you? No, oh, it looks good. Let's have a look at the seed mix. So that's the quantity. For one square metre, it's three grams. And what's in it? Oh, all sorts. Basically, the weeds we've got here, so it's meadow cranesbill, feverfew, meadow buttercup, that kind of thing. You've got the sand there. Is that just simply to make it go further? Yeah, so we can see where we've been, really, right. like a carrier. I'll mix that in with that. Don't want to waste a precious seed. No, absolutely not. Shall go on, just go you, do it, it, you do it, you do it. I'll watch. I'd keep it really low, yeah. Within a few weeks, these seeds will have germinated, and by July, Brownie will have a remarkable new garden feature. Well, I hope to come and see it, because I shan't be back before then, that's for certain. Can't take the pace. Well, you're such a hard taskmaster. <laughs> but I do want to come back and see this garden later. Good. There'll be lots to see, lots of changes. <laughs> After the break, Carol Klein is back in Devon talking about the sex lives of fruit trees with Adrian and Debbie. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, at this time of year, everybody's cutting their grass like mad, and there is a temptation just to ditch the grass cuttings because when you put them on the compost heap, they turn into a horrible green slime, no use to anybody, which is a waste because if you add straw, which is ideal, about 50-50, and just fork it all in. 
and that'll turn into good, lovely, rich compost. If you can't get straw, try using cardboard. I've been doing this the last year, and it does work really well. You just scrumple it up, put the grass directly on top of it, and then build the heap up like that. You can also use paper, but when you do so, you must scrumple up each individual sheet, which can be a bit of a pain. Put the grass cuttings on top of that, leave it for about a year, as part of your general compost heap, and all that goodness can then go back into the garden. Now, Carol Klein is back in Devon, visiting the off-duty police officers, Adrian and Debbie. Adrian and Debbie Taylor are exceptionally hard workers. They both have to cope with demanding jobs, as well as looking after baby Emily, but that doesn't stop them spending every spare moment in their garden. Okay. Yeah. Last time Carol was here, they cleared the stream at the bottom of their garden and made a start planting up the bank above it with wild flowers. Since then, Adrian, the eternal bargain hunter, has added his own special touch. We want to show you what we've been doing since you were last here. Yeah. What next, honestly? <laughs> it was a case of compromise. I wanted real ducks, and Debbie didn't want any ducks, so... We've got plastic ones instead. Oh, look at that! <laughs> you duff fair! But look at that bank! How much you've done! It looks lovely, doesn't it? Those forget-me-nots are just beautiful. Isn't that lovely, that combination of blue and yellow? Nice. So what are we going to do today, then? We need your advice about the orchard today. Yeah? We've got some, <laughs> we've got some squirrels up there as well. What, plastic ones? Yeah, I've got a job lot. <laughs> This is the orchard? It is, yeah. yeah. It's more of like a mixed woodland, really, because we've sort yeah. of picked trees up, sort of willy-nilly. Yes, and put one on each corner. They're yeah. very dotty, aren't they? I mean, I can see a meagre cherry, a little pear, and two damn great big aces. <laughs> they were a bargain. <laughs> they were a bargain. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, they're beautiful trees, but they're just not suitable for an orchard, are they? They're going right. to grow immense. And I think, really, if you're going to turn this into a proper orchard, You've got to do a lot of careful thinking and probably take some very drastic action. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I know just the place. Oh, Great. Lead on. <laughs> I'm taking Adrian and Debbie to Rosemoor, 35 acres in North Devon and one of the most useful showcase gardens in the country. There's a wonderful variety of planting, including a collection of fruit trees, which is an inspiration for anyone planting an orchard. <laughs> I really want you to have a look in here. Look. Oh, wow. Isn't it's it? part of the cottage garden, but it's a Gorgeous. real orchard. And this is the sort of thing you could have, too. Oh, yes, please. This gives you some ideas, mm. doesn't it? And what about this underplanting? I oh, know, isn't it it's gorgeous. gorgeous? Yeah. Look at those fritillaries. Aren't they <laughs> lovely? And they'd be absolutely perfect in your kind of conditions. They'll right. seed themselves everywhere. Oh, love it. Something I've always wanted. Yeah. The apples aren't flowering yet, but against a south-facing wall, there's a pear tree in full bloom. Look at this. this is a fan train pear. But isn't it beautiful? Look at all that blossom. It's incredible. Yeah. They're growing it against a wall because yeah. really pears don't like a cold, wet site. Right. You know, they need the back against something warm if they're growing in this part of the country. Right. So. Perhaps not pears in your garden. I mean, apples right. are going to do tremendously well there, I think. Mm. But um, you're not going to be able to grow one on its own. They tend to be self-sterile, so they need different varieties around yeah. to make sure that pollination takes place. Otherwise, you don't get any fruit. Yeah. Ah. So they need partners, really. Just like us. <laughs> yeah, except rather than two, you need at least three. I don't well, know what you think about that. We'll talk about that, don't we? <laughs> What about self-pollinating ones? Well, they're all right, but they never give you a very good set. They never, you never get as much fruit on them mm. as you do if you've got cross-pollinators. Right. And the other thing you've got to take into consideration is how big your trees are going yeah. to grow. And if you look over there, can you see these funny knobbly bits here? Yeah. All apple and pear trees are grafted onto a rootstock, and it's the rootstock which determines the eventual size of a tree. We can't have anything too big because those are these short, so... Thank that's you. Gonna, that's going to have a box to stand on when she goes picking her apples. I should say in your garden you want three different varieties on um, a sort of medium rootstock because you've got plenty of room, but mm. you don't want anything too ginormous. Okay. Okay. Now that we've seen how it's done at Rosemore, we're sending Adrian off to buy some apple trees while Debbie and I take some drastic action on the orchard area back at home. 
to make way for Adrian's new purchases, we're digging up all of the existing trees, taking care to lift them with really good root balls. You got it? Yep. Still new. <laughs> That's the last of them. Hi, I'm back. Say. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Katie. Right. A new addition to the family. Is that the variety of apples? Yeah, the variety of apples. Yeah. Where do you meet her down the garden <laughs> sunset? Yeah, got two more in the car as well. <laughs> Debbie finds a temporary home for the old trees while Adrian and I unload everything he's bought. I've got Katie, who have you got? I've got Discovery. And I'm Sunset. Oh, are you? <laughs> that's the one that's a bit like a Cox's Orange Pippin, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've, I've never had one, but um, apparently Cox's don't do very well down here, so a chap from the nursery said that this would be yeah. similar, but would, would do well in this climate. Right. And what root stock are they on? It's a medium root stock, so they shouldn't go too high. Uh, but they should all fail at the same time, so they should all pollinate one another. Right, least. and you should get a really good crop of apples. Yeah, let's hope so. So the first thing we want is a three-foot hole. Mm -hmm. That's an absolute minimum. And we ought to skim off this turf, first of all. Yeah. So if we just do it in slices... <laughs> you need to keep this place completely clear right. of any sort of weed until your roots really get established. Right, I think what we need to do now is dig a whole lot of this out and mix it up with some of that proprietary planting mix we've got. Bit at a time. OK, you tell me when. Sorry, I've got it. <laughs> it's like cake mixture, isn't it? Go on. The planting mixture is similar to the compost the trees are grown in, and combining it with the soil will help the young trees to establish themselves. Nice big spadeful in there. A sprinkling of bone meal will also get them off to a good start. You're the only one who's wearing gloves, that's brilliant. Oh, oh look, look at that. Lovely root system. So bung it in the hole, Deb. There's one really important thing we've got to do, and that is stake your little tree. Um, a lot of people don't bother staking trees, but you're on a windy site and you want it to establish well. It would really be advisable, and especially with such a young tree, help it get... Yeah, you could do it upright like that, right. but I think it might be better if you, you know, do it to the side right. and then you're against the prevailing wind and it'll support okay. it. That's great. That's Good wonderful. That. I think I can hear your baby crying. Yeah, you're doing such a grand job. I'm going to leave you guys and I'm going to go and get Emily. All right? Right, OK. OK. okay. okay. For me. Yeah. <laughs> and me. See you in a bit. That looks yeah, great. After securing the stake with a tie, it's just a matter of filling the hole with the planting mixture, gently firming it down, and finishing off with a thick layer of manure. This mulch is going to do two things. It's going to yeah. suppress the weeds, yeah. and it's going to retain the moisture. Yeah. And we mustn't cover this rootstock, either right. with soil or mulch. Now that we've got a system going, it takes no time at all to plant the other two trees. Haven't you been busy? They look fantastic. Oh, they yeah. look really good. Oh, well, isn't it lovely? You've got an orchard. And Debbie, before I forget, you know at Rosemore, you, you always said you always wanted a particular plant. Yeah. Well, I have searched high and low for you today. Close your eyes. <laughs> little snakehead fertility. Oh, oh isn't that, that is romantic? beautiful. Look at that. What do you wow. think of that, Emily? Yes, oh. lovely. <laughs> Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Next week, Anne-Marie is getting a bit bogged down with Mike and Alison, and Carol is carting compost with Diana. And I'm visiting a brand-new garden, so I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>